What's going on, guys? Good morning. Today, September 6th, Thursday, 7 a.m. <laughs> it's so early, y'all. I haven't even turned on CNBC. Still got the do-rag on, trying to get my waves up. 360 is the only goal. It's the only motive. Today, I, I mean, i just been hearing a lot of people wanting to talk about recession. 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 The recession is coming. We got our doom and gloomers. Um, it, it's got to be coming soon, right? It has been 10 years since the, the last one happened. However, in this video, I will talk about um, the, the key indicators I am looking for in this uh, recession that's coming. And I, I believe it's the recipe. I believe this is the way that there will be a recession. Uh, ooh, pre-market just went down. It was up. I think that tariff talk, them trade wars, just absolutely wrecking it. We're wrecking the momentum. I think does the does the Trump staff or the Trump team have shorts all through the market? I I just don't know. I just don't know. First, I did want to talk about. The day ones for you all, for you all to be here listening in to my very first videos. I still have yet to get a mic. I'm using my laptop mic for you all to just continue to watch these videos. I really do appreciate it. And I do. I want something for y'all in the future, uh, even in the progress and the uh, group chat. I'm in. I'm, I'm seeing people saying like technical analysis things when, when we're, we're calling out stocks like, you know, uh, the RSI this and MACD this like it's great progress. I challenge all of the viewers to, to at least start drawing channels, at least start drawing channels, at least look at RSI as it the, the exact point. It's momentum going is it an up, down or in consolidation. And as far as the MACD is, did it cross? But if it did cross, is it also moving as well? Now the pre-market spy is up again. I just don't know what's going on pre-market. Uh, I'm so sad that I got screwed over um, yesterday about the pre-market. I saw green coop. My coop call got crushed yesterday. It opened up at $84 uh, coop and, and, and bottomed at like $75.60. I thought I bought the, I was catching a knife at $78.60. And, and just didn't know it was going to get flushed after an amazing earnings. Blaming Facebook, Twitter, and Google. I do not like y'all. Um, but let's see, look first look at um, the good sectors to be in. So on the balance.com, it's telling you that energy, utilities, healthcare, and consumer staples are great sectors to be in. Let's confirm that. So I first wanted to show you all the year to date performance, and I'm trying to spread awareness. Healthcare is one of the top sectors to have in your portfolio. I, I do always suggest being diverse throughout the entire market. But let's look at that year to date performance. You, you see 15s, you see 20s, you're in bio, you see 22, 10s, 44, 104. There, there, there's a lot of healthy growth right here. Now let's look over to technology because right now you've, you've got your healthcare and you've got your technology, pretty much the biggest ones for the year. Decent, decent. But let's see what happened yesterday. Technology right now is heated. It is absolutely heated. I mean, PEs are are, are through the roof. Um, it has a lot of room to fall. Um, so this is a prep. This is not a recession. To, so like, do not mark my words. Today does not start the recession. But I'm just showing you all how the technology sector in a, in, in rough times is hurt. But if you come over to the healthcare side, the industrial goods, your utilities, your, your everyday use stuff is still green. Please get a little sprinkle of healthcare in your portfolio, guys. 
don't want you all to uh, lose on the, the the risky downfall of a recession. You also, if you do want to have a more riskier uh, play, you can buy SQQQ. I'm gonna pull that up in a new tab. Sorry, y'all, I should have been prepared. And just a description of what the SQQQ, it is the ProShares Ultra Pro Short QQQ provides three times inverse exposure to a modified market cap weighted index of 100 of the largest nine financial issues listed on the NASDAQ. So that being said, we've had bullish market ever since. So this fund has been shorting the market every single day. And it, you know, it started at 40, 4,700, almost 5,000 and now $11. However, when things do turn, turn, um, turn south, I wouldn't expect this thing to curl all the way back to 5,000. But on the, on the days where it was rough, we did have some rough patches in February. And then I think a little bit in March. You see this thing go the inverse way. It, it starts getting bought up, guys. So if you do want a riskier play, I would say load up on your buy, your uh, SQQQ stocks and then buy call options on the SQQQ as well. Um, I also would say buy uh, the QQQ puts because the NASDAQ has a bunch of technology in their top 10 holdings. I'm telling y'all, the top 10 holdings, holdings, huge, they're inflated, some, some are, okay, you got Apple, Amazon, all the way down to Comcast, but the ones right now that's dragging the QQQ, even though it may have a green day, you have Google to blame, you have Facebook to blame, and you have Intel to blame. They're just going through some some tough times right now. You just you're gonna be able to really buy those QQQ puts when things go really really south and, and profit big. So I want to show you all some signs that I think I'm gonna. Oh I, no, not I think I know I'm looking at as far as determining the recession. So we do have two kind of pops downwards. We have that dot-com bubble, and we have the 2008 market crash. I did some prep on the market crash because I feel like it's a little bit different. The 2008 market crash seems like it would happen more so than the, the dot-com bubble because that was only due to the start of the internet. So my indicator for knowing that it is time for me to exit and become bearish is the weekly 20 EMA. So uh, TradingView uses the 2020 as the EMA, the, the default EMA, and I didn't even touch it. And my volume uh, 20 uh, moving average is the same because it's the default. I, I see, I was looking and looking for the, the different indicators and trying to see some use VIX looking at the volatility. I, I think this is the key right here, y'all. Look at the weekly 20 EMA. It went when it was going up. Occasionally it would be over occasionally, but it would usually be support. So right here, when when you saw that first first drop, you saw that that weekly EMA was uh, actually resistance over at least three weeks. Then it had the dead cat bounce bounce back up. They thought everything was good because it actually beat the price of the prior high. Then you see a second time that the weekly EMA can is actually resistance for three weeks popped over. As soon as it went a third time, that's when I'm exiting. I'm exiting when the weekly 20 EMA is... <laughs> is not is is resistance that third time for a sustained time y'all right here i just want to get a better look for you all to see 
So on this first one, one, two, three weeks, that's that's three weeks of resistance. It, it broke it. Second time, one, two, three, three weeks. Guys, three is always the first amount of patterns when you're looking at technical analysis. Three weeks. It's not even high volume selling yet, but the this is before people really start flushing their account. So we have our first time in, in August. We have in 2007. We have our second time of three weeks in November. And as soon as I see on December 2007, when the RSI, the week, I mean, the weekly 20 EMA is below and is becoming resistance, that's where you want to exit, guys. You don't want to, oh, well, if I if I hold, it may go up. It, it may go up. No, you want to liquidate your account. On the third time, the weekly 20 EMA is resistance because it popped back. Because it because the market likes to do that. It, it likes to drop heavy, pop, drop even heavier, drop, and then just free fall. Like they like they want to catch you off guard. So let's let's look at the current situation we have. So I'm not considering this in October really something. However, you can factor it. Let's just see if I'm gonna zoom in. It was, it was one week under the 20 EMA. Then we have our second time, but I'm actually considered this my first, the first time really seriously, because we have the first time it was three weeks of uh, resistance for the 20 EMA to be resistance and now has made it support. And I'm looking for two additional times for the weekly 20 EMA to act as resistance because that's when a huge red flag to the market going down, down, down. Flush it. Um, let's see. Anything else? Okay. So besides that, um, I hope that that was pretty a good determination of some signs that I'm looking for. And then also those sectors, guys. Those sectors. You got your energy. Utilities, healthcare, and consumer staple. The balance.com. Shouts out to them. Also, guys, please use Finviz. It's probably one of the top websites. I'm not um, sponsored by them. I'm not paid by them, but this is a great website. I use this actually for the screener as well, beside the heat map, so I can find the exact stocks I like. And I like those high performers. Um, but you can find your dividend yields. You can find your sectors, your industries that you're looking for, and, and just go from there, guys. Um, now, I do just want to talk about some hot stocks to look at. Right, for, for today, I want to talk about Tesla, guys. Tesla. So I did, I think, let's see, what is the exact? I don't want to, because I'm starting to actually want to say terms, like the proper terms. And that right there, guys, is a, a symmetrical triangle. I'd, I'd say it would be a symmetrical triangle. A huge one starting, I had pretty much started in August of 2017. And the other leg kind of started in November 2016. Sometimes you, when you're drawing these, these channels, these wedges, pennants, flags, Sometimes, I don't know if it's the right way. Again, I'm a beginner uh, technical anal an analysis. I um, do believe it's okay to uh, draw different lines at different times e just to get a, a the good picture of what happened. And let's just see what, what happened with this uh, weekly 20 EMA. This is something new to me. Uh, so one time, it, it, it did it for a long period of time. Then did it a second time, and now it has done it a third time. The weekly 20 EMA is, <clears throat> is at now resistance, and it's actually super high up right now. To even be bullish right now, guys, on Tesla, it, it needs to break $312. Do you all think that that's going to re recover? Like, do you, think, do you think so? Just, like, comment below. 
do you think right now Tesla is should be a three hundred and twelve dollar company or a four twenty company? Come on, guys, really. But this is important just to see the technical analysis. Not saying it is a bull run, but it is now gonna probably affect a bull trap. Yesterday we hit like the when I tell you this is drawn. This was drawn before today happened. I drew the line from here to the low of uh, April 2018. Technical analysis works. I mentioned in the chat that 280 is probably bounce time. Guess what, guys? Bounce time surely happened. A little, little tiny bounce, but now in pre-market, the Tesla uh, price action is at 286. So a 2% pre-market a positive move. Uh, I do believe it'd be temporarily to be able to sell those shorts, sell those puts now, because I know y'all are up big. Wait, let it let it ride a little bit up. Probably buy again at 300, buy some cheap puts. Let it rise even a little bit more. But I, I just don't see it breaking 315, 313, 310 at that to be to start another bull run because you got Elon Musty just just doing whatever he want to do doing whatever he wants to do guys so um, I'm bearish long term on this uh, this new bearish signal that I, I just uh, made this morning that at three times of it being under the weekly 20 EMA because because when you do these large time frames you notice like strong patterns. I do the one month, one week, and one day chart. I cannot get anything from a four hour chart. Me personally. Others use the four hour 180 day. Uh, some people even use two hours, but I personally cannot see a confirmed pattern if it's not at least one day. So if, beside a bearish stock, I do want to talk about a hot stock. I believe Cisco should be ready if it breaks $80. I mean, not $80, uh, $48. Uh, right now, pre-market, it's red. Uh, however, I did like, um, before this red day, I did like, oh, wow, they beat earnings by 40%, guys. And they had one, two, three three, four, five, six green days. Six green days of positive price action. You got your resistance, not strong resistance, at 40, yep, 48. So if if markets turn, <clears throat> if markets turn really bullish today, at least on Cisco, I, I like to confirm before getting into a trade, uh, the weekly turn into a buy signal However, that RSI is on a decline. Some say that the uh, MACD is trash because it's a lagging indicator, but I just like it for it to, conf I can confirm uh, certain things and it also has the divergence. If you do want a faster moving uh, indicator, you do want to use the Stoke RSI and I actually need to do more research on the Stoke RSI. I'm not going to say that uh, my, my, um, setup is perfect but i do always want to improve uh let's look at this volume guys um the volume actually is a little concerning we do have three extremely high uh sell days one two three and only one high volume day um in may and then you can go all the way back to march however you can cancel that one out because right on the left and the right you got either equal or more selling so i did not notice that um during my um during my uh say so in the markets uh push for it to be this to be bullish but i do believe at least a short-term bullish uh signal would for it to be able to break that 48 by the breakout and and profit off of either two percent ten percent because we are emotionless when you're an emotionless trader, you want to profit, and and that's it. You're not ha you're not like overly exuberant or euphoric off of two hundred percent or ten percent. You you made your money today, and you're gonna make your money tomorrow.
Let's see. Oh, RSI talk. Um, so I did see some people like think about stocks, how they are low RSI. That's an immediate buy. That means it's a great signal, etc. Even the MACD. Oh, well, the MACD, what is a buy signal? Oh, the MACD is a sell signal. That means it is a buy if it's a buy signal or sell if it's a sell signal. And if it's actually, if the RSI is actually low, I, I should buy it, right? All these things are good things to think about. However, you need more research. You have to get the first, the exact point of the RSI. Is the RSI at, at whatever price? However, you need to know the RSI's direction. Uh, right now, let's go back to Tesla, just to it'd be clear, because I'm sure it's on the sharp decline. Oh, well, the RSI right now is 32. That's an immediate buy, guys. That you, I, I should buy it. Like I just know I got to buy it. Do you all see this decline from August? Let it because we don't want to buy the exact bottom. We're not gambling. We're not guessing. We're not trying to be the bottom feeder uh, when it comes to the swing trading. Uh, you can be a bottom feeder to your long-term holds if it's just going through the ringer and you just have that hunch, that inside info, that greener days are come. But we don't gamble when we invest. We want to confirm bullish signs. So when we see these RSIs that are extremely low, we want to let it consolidate Curl back up and know that it is going to be fine. And also, I don't know if most people know that you actually have resistances at RSI. You can consider this uh, a resistance level. Right here at July, it, it hit resistance and fell. It broke it. Bounced off as support because supports and resistance is this. It can be the same level, and usually that's what happens. It was support, popped, fell through. It tried to hit again, and is now resistance, guys. So RSI is actually a great thing for you all to when you all are doing this technical analysis. Look to see if there are RSI uh, resistance levels, and these RSI resistance levels mean price level uh, um, resistance levels and that's what we really um, really want to know is those resistance levels on price more than the RSI however that RSI helps us for the price um, I am gonna run through I haven't even charted these prior to the video but uh, glue Katos and AMRN were suggested for me to chart so I'm just gonna chart these really quickly gonna get the best idea I have in, in about two minutes, guys, two minutes on each stock, bear, I mean, the absolute max. So we do have, I'm going to look, I look at volume first. We do have great buying here, great buying volume, like multiple days of buying volume, huge buying volume after a strong nosedive. That is bullish, guys. The bulls are buying the dip. They want this thing to continue going forward. We did have that resistance right here. It was a rounded top, um, broke below that 20-day EMA. I'm using the day chart on these quick, uh, quick analysis. Uh, after it, it, the resistance. I mean, after the 20-day EMA became resistance, you do have that that swing down. Me personally, I'm not going to. I'm gonna let this fall. I'm gonna let this break above the 20-day EMA. I'm going to wait another day for it to sustain that break, and then I'm going to ride that swing up, guys. If you are interested in swing trading, holding for a short-term profit, uh, because it's not day trading, because with, with these charts, you, you'd have to look at like the one minute, the five second, the 10, the 10 millisecond chart to be able to like really day trade, and I just highly discourage day traders. If you're interested in making these swing trades, let it fall. Let the bulls buy it. Let the bulls sustain the growth, the trend, and buy it going forward. Uh, currently, let's look currently what's going on. We do have another rounded top. We do have that 20-day EMA um, right there at uh, $7.09. Pre-market, it's at 730 
I think the Bulls uh, bought that dip, guys, and I, you might might catch it at a good deal right now. Sell volume, not that bad. And this might be a fake out, guys. Might be a fake out right here on the MACD. Going to KTOS. Going to KTOS. Don't even know what this company is, guys, but we're charting it. We don't care about what the company does. We don't care about the CEO or anything. We trade the chart, y'all. If the chart don't say it's bullish, it ain't bullish, guys. It just ain't. Well, we know that the, the R&D and the, and the... No, we have to confirm as a swing trader. Because um, you want to invest as well, guys. You, I'm not saying to only swing trade. Right now, I'm only swing trading and learning a lot, losing a lot, gaining a lot. You just have to deal with that as far as like taking advantage of still being in college. Uh, if when I as soon as I get into the workforce, guys, I am not going to be a swing trader. I just don't have the time for it. However, um, investing and swing trading mixed together, guys, wonderful, wonderful opportunities, guys. So we're going to do this real quick. We are going to draw the channel up. That's not a good channel. Sometimes you have to do that, guys. You got to draw the best channel possible. All right, guys. And then you got an interesting kind of channel going up top because I see a lot of price points getting tested right here. Booyah. All right, so just kind of wanting to, it's getting closer. It's kind of wedging in there, right? Um, volume is a little low, but it did have a, a good, a good uh, green day. All these dang ads, and I don't even know what this is. Right there, move that there. Let's look at earnings. Earnings, what the? Earnings was negative. <laughs> I don't know, guys. Why are y'all buying that? But anyways, um, we do see some bearish wick, guys. We we see some bearish wicks three times. When you see things three times, guys, it's usually a pattern. One, well, actually two. But uh, two days back to back of those bearish wicks on the top. You got a huge bearish wick right here when it tried to hit uh, that upward uh, wedge. And then you got a third time. Me personally, I believe that it's going to have a slight pullback soon, guys. A slight pullback soon. Something very healthy for the stock. Um, hit that 20 EMA and, and keep going forward. Keep rising this wedge. But guys, I do believe that the um, a price of pullback to... Let's see if there's any other price points. Okay, we can say that 1320. 1320, great entry. You can see over here, it happened one, two, three, four. Yeah, four times. Clearly, it hit four times about that 1321 price point. So I'd say first price point, 1321, if that doesn't. Um, holding a little bit right here, but I do see a pullback coming soon, guys. RSI on a little decline. Buy signal just crossed. However, it may fall because the histogram is extremely low on this. AMRN, last stock of the day. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's get a better idea. Wow, guys, we are investing in a company that's on a downward trend. What is going on? This is not my personal advice. I, this is never financial advice. Do your own research, guys. Do your own research. So I will not, because when the, with these lines, you can't draw. So this is a bad drawing. I hope you guys are not doing this. Well, if you are, just you're, you, you have to learn that you have to draw what actually happened. And this is the high, and this is another high on this downward trend. And you have to just continue to have that that line drawn all the way down. Um, we have, I don't know, just all over the place volume, earnings, uh, sixty percent negative, a good green one five percent or six percent, uh, a negative thirty seven percent um, earnings, but it only skyrocketed. I, I just don't know, guys. I don't know much about this, or I don't know anything about this company. Uh, we do have good selling, I mean, buying pressure. We have some uh, phenomenal buying pressure here. 
RSI, um, it's not like I like my favorite RSI pattern is when it likes to curl up. It's not curling up, but it's still still on a slight incline and has some consolidation right here. It's it's a lot of dramatic consolidation, but I, I consider it's consolidation. Um, buying pressure outweighs the sell pressure. If you look at the sell pressure, the sell pressure is on a decline. Uh, if you if it's the pre market price three dollars and twenty eight cent a dot of one one point two percent profit already off the pre market, I'm slick bullish on this because that buying pressure is there. The RSI not even overbought and it's still it's still climbing. Uh, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. You sometimes you also can see I'm dropping knowledge. Please, please, please have your notepad ready, guys. Have your notepad ready. So look at look at a chart and look to see when it's overbought. Let's look what happens when it's overbought. So you do have a look from here to here, twenty six percent drop when it wanted to pop out. Don't want to don't want to pop out right there, guys. When it was overbought here, you had a thirty three percent drop. What? What is that? Is it overbought again? Let's see these patterns. And what, like we say, guys, three percent. I mean, three times is a clear pattern. You have a twenty-seven, a thirty-three, a twenty-two percent drops when that RSI, that daily RSI, guys, is overbought. Um, so if you're playing this, playing this stock, guys, if, you, if you're really playing this stock and you really want to make mad gains, um, and even right now, I think it's bullish currently short term. Let's draw a real quick. I actually did a lot of analysis on this more than I thought. Um, there is $3.51 clear resistance, and there was um, a resistance on that downward trend. However, it did pop. What would sustain this growth would be continued buying, high volume buying, guys. Buying does not need to be right here. You're not, you better not be happy on a, a push of 10% and it'd be right here, like that low. Actually be as scared as I don't know what, have a tight stop loss, guys. Um, you want green days, but you want high volume green days because that means institutions are buying up. Uh, we are retail investors and we have literally no say on the buying volume and selling volume. We have to follow the big fish, guys. We got to. So uh, I am short term uh, bullish, extremely bullish on the short term. Buying pressure has to sustain. Volume has to sustain. And if we break above 351, keep going forward, keep launching itself all the way to, I'd say at least if it really wants to push through 351, I don't see why, let's say randomly right here, $4. $4 if 351 breaks with strong volume, I don't see why it shouldn't go up to $4, but look for that volume to sustain. Look for that RSI. If you see that RSI overbought, immediately not sell but have that stop loss ready have that trailing stop loss i don't even know what that is or have an, a limit stop loss make sure you, you secure that bag guys um this was a 30 minute video i actually thought that the 30 minute video was good it's lengthy if you uh, need a diff a lot of different factors i will have short videos on one or three you know one to three stocks that i'm actually going in on but I wanted this to be uh, very inclusive, drop knowledge here and there of what I like to use, um, some some conclusion. I would like for you all to know about that 20 EMA, I mean, on the uh, weekly. One more time to review. This is this is knowledge, y'all. Y'all in class right now. Y'all are in Darius's class, or AKA the technician's class, guys. That's gonna be my uh, new YouTube name. Just, just a preview. All right, guys, what happened? One, the week, on the weekly chart, the 20 EMA, one, two, three, resistance below the 20 weekly EMA. One, two, three, again. A third time right here, I'm out. 
I'm not even thinking about it. I'm buying puts like crazy on everything. <laughs> Mostly targeting those NASDAQs, those QQQs, those, oh, well, I want to make 20X in, in over a course of five years. That's cool. But you know those people with profits going to liquidate to, to save themselves. Everybody's going to be in the in a mode to it's self first. I don't care about anybody else. I'm selling. So as soon as the third time the weekly 20 EMA is now resistance, y'all better watch out. Y'all better watch out. One more time. Y'all better watch out. Currently, we have one time now looking for two more times for this to happen, guys. Let's, let's be knowledgeable. Let's look at them charts. Let's keep up to date. One, two, three. Three times, uh, three weeks of it being resistant. So that's, I'm considering that a one time occurrence. Then for it to do it a second time and then later do it a third time. On that third time, I'm out. And don't get faked out. Don't get, oh, well, it's, it, it went up because that's what a lot of people got fooled, right? A lot of people got fooled and did and nobody's really charting for real. Like, be honest, guys, a lot of people aren't charting. Um, one, two, three. So even right here, they're like, oh well, I, I'm just on the hopium. I, I, I hope it's gonna gonna stop selling. I hope you guys stop. Cause I'm long, I'm a bull. Uh then they get happy. They're they were extremely happy. Well, I'm so glad I saved myself from selling my entire position. Everybody's so so, ah, heart attack. <laughs> as, as soon as they couldn't even finish the sentence, heart attack, their money is gone. 401k, don't look at it. Don't look at it until, honestly, didn't even break even until, I think, what, 2013, right? Yeah, 2013. Rough, boys, rough. So we don't want to be in the wreck city. I do get a lot of, um, I do get a lot of uh, inspiration from Crypto Kirby trading, I picked up on a lot of like his techniques are now my techniques. He's a great YouTuber to uh, look into as far as technical analysis. He only trades, I think, cryptocurrencies. I wish this man would like chart uh, options because he probably would make a killing. He'd be on the charts. He'd be he'd be hip. He'd be hip. Um, right now, pre market is two eighty nine ten. Uh, I just, I don't know. I just, I do, I could imagine a retest of the 20 EMA and, and that would be means of $281. I know it's rough and I know we don't want to think about it, but it, it's okay, guys. It's it's okay for us to have, no, actually, more realistically, 287 If they blow past the 20 EMA on, on this, I, I'm short-term bearish, but we have... 267 to still be um a bullish in a bullish market it, it can it literally can fall all the way down here 267 still be a bullish market because it is on an upward ascending channel and it has the right and on these ascending channels it has the right to go up all the way up to the top maintain the top a position or be on the bottom and test that bottom multiple multiple times and we've been gravitating away from it. However, it is still okay for it to, to drop down. Uh, I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Hope y'all learned something. Uh, definitely continue to come back. Subscribe. Please subscribe, guys. I do want 50 subscribers by the end of this week. Uh, and also 1,000 views total on my account. That would be mean a lot. Uh, comment below. Like it up. I appreciate y'all. And I'll see y'all later.